sling it. Sling it. Episode eight. Sling your hook. Sling your bald. <laughs> is this episode eight? I don't know, mate. I think uh, it is. Could well be. Well, it's episode some. Something or other. Um, we'll go with that. We'll go with that. Yeah. So, Aye, so uh, what are you shooting this for? Well, as you know, we're shooting your 85s that have had, had for a lifetime. Titan Hunter. Titan Hunter one with a black power cord wrap. Yeah. And I'm now shooting <coughs> the apple and that. I got you out of work. Me and the fork. You got me the fork out of work. And I have a no, YouTube I say, video I, of me making that frame. That's the one that's 2 million views or something. The, the, the reel on Instagram has got... 2.1 million views or something and the the YouTube the full length video's got a good few views as well yeah but it's that was that one turned out super nice super do you mind whenever I made that that it was wet it was still wet and so that's because I left it I didn't leave it outside I left it in like a you left it in the shit it was too sheltered it wasn't it was getting too aired enough Aye. and it was well, it still cracked no it even warped no didn't it it didn't crack it warped See the way it's so slim that way? Aye. Look at it guys, you might see, you'll see the, on the how to, or the making of it video anyway, but I would have, if that hadn't happened, them forks would have been thicker. The reason why that's as slim as what it is, is because the forks started to warp like that as Aye. it dried, and I didn't realise it was wet until I had it rough shaped. Mm. And then you could feel it and see it. Mm. But um, you got a grease spud in that place, I had it. Could you? Ah, well, it was in like you know the way you get the boxes for a garden, or for your lawnmower and all, and all that stuff. It was in one of them, so there was no sunlight getting to it. But I painted, I painted all the ends of it. That's right. I so then they've sealed the moisture in. I've sealed the moisture in and didn't leave it outside. You, you don't know. if if you have an oversized chunky fork and you're going to make a cat out of it, let it sit outside. Aye, and you don't really need to seal the ends. Ah, uh, if you've a cut long enough. I think that I sealed two ends. And left, did I leave the bottom open? No, and it was all top. sealed. Was it all sealed? All was it a, like a tarry thing you had no, on? No, it was white. Was it white emulsion maybe or something? No, it wasn't. White gloss maybe or something? I can't, I can't remember. But, you know, some boys likes a heavy catty. Mm. And I used to like a heavy catty. Mm -hmm. Right? But I just like... There used to be a man. It's nice and light. Mm. But I like it because it's light. It's light, but it's ergo. Mm. And I think that's why it works. Aye. You know what I mean? It just sits in there. Aye. It's heavily shaped. Lovely. It's very three dimensional. Yep. I love the palm swell and all on it. I like the bark on it. Aye. Uh, that, that's sort of something that I've popularised, you know, that since I've started doing them natties on my channel. Was having the... The bark on it. The bark on a kind of template shape, if Aye. you know what I mean. Like before everybody else and, and me included would have made the catty out of the centre of the fork ah. so you lost all the bark hmm. whereas now I'm sawing them down the middle and using the back using, <coughs> the, back using the outside now it's dangerous to cut them if you go onto YouTube and look at the way I'm cutting them the way I'm cutting them in the bandsaw it's kind of misusing the bandsaw ah. but um, you but know I can shoot the flat frame better than I can shoot that there yeah. yeah. now I can shoot that better than I can shoot the flat frame I it just that's the, the I like the wedge. I like something that sinks. See the way I can lock that in there. Yeah. I like locking that in and then that. It's like your tail whip. No, your tail whip ones you used to do. Yeah, yeah. It used to come up and it locked in. Lovely. Yeah. Here, I shot that for years. A good few years I shot I that. Had good a, success with it. Like. I actually seen a guy on one of the German Facebook groups recently, Mike Franklin, post at one of my old tail whip things. Yep. I'd say he's got the most extensive extensive collection. Collection of he's got more than I do. I never <laughs> kept any of them older ones. Ah. Like I don't have them. I still have that, yep. Whatever I cut of them and made of them, they're all out there in the world. Ah. Like I have I could get more cut like, but I, I, I don't think I will. It's because you have to do left and right. You have to do left and right hand hold and see to be honest, see a, like a chalice type shape. That's the see, same thing. see a, a handle with a point on it, mm. it's hard to wrap round, and you've always got a wee exposed bit. Mm. Whereas the round handle, you can wrap round it lovely. Mm -hmm. You still get the, the blue waste paper. Do you just wear it sometimes? 
No, I'm bringing sexy back. That bringing was the first shoot I went to. Out oh, there, look, guys. He was like, out oh, yeah. there. I was like, my God, look at that. There, it's yeah. a poster boy right there. Yeah. <laughs> 2015. That was 2015. my first shoot. That's right. But I am still shooting up. I'm shooting point seven sniper sling green now. With the colder weather. <laughs> I'm, not too bad. I'm not too bad with the colder weather because you're always shooting black bands. I'm shooting black bands, but I'm also in the when it's freezing outside, minus whatever. I'm in the fort lift and the telescope at fort lift with the heat and all. Mm. So my bands is always warm, and I just do drive bys like that and work. Bang, bang, bang. Yeah. Gangster style. Gangster style. So France is on this year and China's on this year. Are you going? So I'd like to go to France. We'll see. Probably. France hasn't just as quite a scalp as China. China, like. But China's the one to go China. to, like. China. China. Yeah. But that is the one to go to. If you can hold What's your own. Trump said? I mean, at the start of the I COVID. Go, I, the COVID thing, I can't remember. She's like, why do you keep calling it the Chinese virus? And he's like, because it comes from China. <laughs> <laughs> and they made remixes of yeah, your ears and all. Dance tunes and all. China, China, China. China. Oh, fucking uh, brilliant. But, but no, Ch China would be the one. If China's you, the one see, to go to. See if you could go to China and smoke it. Like, you couldn't. You know what I mean? But I mean, mm. if you could go there and place or. Even place. I think one of the Czech lads came in 35th or something and to him this was a big accomplishment. And I think the same Czech man was in the top 10 in the the one last year. Yeah, really. you, but you have to remember like that CSCC club in Shanghai has got like 800,000 members or something ridiculous. Yeah. So for him to get 35th. Like, ah, he's good like. And them guys, although they're very good, what they're lacking in this competition experience, although they've, you know, in a short space of time, they're getting they're getting a lot in. But they'll have internal comps, but do you know what I mean? Oh, they, they do, aye. Yeah. But the internal comps for them aren't as good because they're probably comfortable in their internal comps. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, but the uh, the level the level of shooting would be higher. Their internal comps. It's a, but it's in a short space of time. What I mean is, you know, two thousand eighteen. They were rubbish. No, I'm talking about the Chinese. Oh, the Chinese. The Chinese, I'm talking about. The Chinese internal comp, that's what this one is in Shanghai. This isn't like a... An international? Well, an international person can attend, but mm. it's just the annual Chinese, the Shanghai... What about North Korea? I'm not sure North Koreans are into it, but, you know, we could try. There'll be some, there'll be some journey on this. Mm. Kim Jong-un. <gasps> if you go over and you fall asleep in front of him, he'll shoot you with an anti-aircraft gun. Oh. He do that already. Uh, sure he done that to his uncle or something. I don't know. He's a good man. Good fella. That's what you need. You need somebody like you that. You do, yeah. You keep boys on our toes. <laughs> 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 but um I the you know the the Czech men you, when you watch them now compared to what you watched them before, like their shot cycles are on point. Yeah. I was going to say there, she likes the Chinese boys there, mm. right? I wonder, see when they're, do they just pick up a cat, right? And just start shitting the way we did? Or do they have a system in place where you go to, say, uh, you learn how to, somebody teaches you how to shoot a shotgun, somebody teaches you how to shoot a bow, somebody teaches you blah, 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 right? Do they have that in place over there? Is it something that, you go and do a course, right? This is, they take you through the anatomy, the catapult. They I take would you say through, so. They take you through, your, right, this is the steps of your shot cycle, this is da da da. I and would you, say so. I would say so. Too, There's yeah. a book. If it's that popular right there, then. GZK put a, put a post up one time and it was a Chinese book, How to Shoot a Slingshot. It was all Chinese, so obviously I can't imagine anybody bought it. I, I, that's something I never could understand. <laughs> Chinese I've, been, I've been learning about a Chinese in Duolingo. Oh. Kung Pao Chicken? And uh, no, well, I don't, haven't got as far as Kung Pao Chicken. <laughs> but, it's company, uh, it's <laughs> But, uh, you know, it'd be very interesting to get that book translated and see what they're all oh, about, innit? It was. And they, they have out there... Is like, it online? They, Is it online, no? I think you have to buy a physical book. GZK sells it, like. But it's literally all in Mandarin. You know, it's not even like... Oh, you just want to it. No. But, uh, that... That club, that club in Shanghai, they have got full-time professional shooters, like, that's their career. Yeah. 
Do you know what I mean? I'll be class on that. And then they have got like, do you know the way you'd see in America there with the sh indoor shooting ranges mm. where they have like all the stations and all and then the target and the target gets wheeled up to you and all. Mm. They've got all that in China. They've got like places where you, like slingshot shops you can go in. Oh. It's like every slingshot on AliExpress oh. is in the shop and then there's a range attached to the You'd shop. There. <gasps> Imagine you going to, you going to China. Where's Graf not? He's meant to be shooting here today. He's in the big AliExpress superstore there. I don't know. He says, oh, I'm no shooting today, boys. I'm just done here looking. He and a container ship back uh, to Ramelstown. Full of stuff. I'd say you can get stuff out there for pennies. Oh, like. so me. Unreal. But, uh, yeah, uh, sorry, for example, I was looking at a dropaway rest for the bow, right? Mm. Over here, they're 50 quid. Mm. AliExpress, same one. Exactly the same. 16 quid. Mm -hmm. Here's me, I'm not. No, I'll wait a couple of weeks mm. for it coming. I'm not right. paying that for that. AliExpress now is doing a lot of stuff five day delivery. See, mine, when, when I bought it, I looked at the bank account and it says AliExpress GB. Is that just going through a GB right. thing? Right. I thought they maybe had a warehouse or something. No, no well. It's not so lucky. It wouldn't be yeah. that lucky, sure, wouldn't it? <coughs> you never know what way it could end up. Some stuff now ships from Spain. Yeah. So unless of a warehouse in Spain like this, so like you'll go in and you'll be able to pick and it'll say ships from the EU mm. and then you'll see in the warehouse in Spain some stuff ships from Russia. Yeah. Although well, you can't say too much about Russia there. No, you can't, no. Like yeah. right, bad bear. Yeah. Uh, what were we talking about there, about the Chinese men going through I, school? I would say that they have a very, very, very complex system yeah. that we don't understand. The language barrier is too great. Like I was learning about Chinese and that dual lingo, and you talk about a language that is top to front, completely different. Like, Aye. completely different. I think when you hear a foreigner in their broken English, they're saying stuff back to front, but Aye. they're saying it how they would say it in their own language. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? Very sweat and all uh -huh. you know, things like that. You know? Like. They simplify it, they short, shorten it down, whereas we Aye. make it longer. Aye. You know. And the the way that sentences are constructed, like a sentence that's a question, is back to front and all. Aye. And you can make you can mix it up very handy. Mm. And then everything is all all the all the words are to, like just noises to me. You know what I mean? Yeah. If I was trying to speak something to somebody, you'd Sorry. nearly have to get them to say it fifteen times real slow. Aye. But that's why I was learning it because I'd planned to go out. But yeah. France, France would be good to go to. Like France would be, you know, yeah, hundred percent. I think for going bow hunting, that that's the first, that's the closest place I can go. Aye, France. It's France. That's Are the you like bow, bow hunting? France. Aye. Yep. Didn't know that. France, Italy, Belgium. Italy as well. Italy as well. Uh, Italy would be good. Italy would be class. Like going boar hunting out there. Like yeah. you can't do. You can't bow hunt in Germany. See when I went and I drove from Rome to Gualdo Totino. Yeah. You, like you must see the countryside, like Aye, class. Mountains. <gasps> like that whole place is mountains. Aye. We only have hills here. Aye, we don't have mountains then. No. It's called Chains Hill for a reason. Aye. Isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> it's not the mountain. Yeah. But uh oh. Aye, that I was watching that podcast that you recommended me, that fella from Shot IQ. What Joel, do you call him? Joel Turner. And he's talking about them. Check him out guys. Joel Turner, Shot IQ. Open, open loop and close loop. Open loop and close loop shoot and making a decision that has, or is it an involuntary action? Yes. Go! Yeah. Or, no, it's not on. Boom. Yeah. It's <coughs> as close as that. You'd think it's the same, but it's not the same, it's different. Eagerness to get the shot away. Aye. Makes you flinch. Yeah. Like he, when Joel Turner's talking, he's talking about primarily, he's talk, he's a he's a SWAT trainer, so he teaches guys rifles. He's a, a lifetime archer, recurve compound, but he's talking about re using release aids, either a trigger or a release aid. But he's doing it with a recurve as well, which would be closer to how we would shoot a catapult. Yeah, but the release aid is something that you can pull a trigger. Or you can use back tension to set it off, whereas ours is pressure. Yeah. But it's the same thing, only it's just a different medium. Well, it, 
the really way nice. the way he described I love everything about it and it can be likened to slingshots except for the release I yeah. think because the release where even a recurve string your yeah. fingers are in front of the string you haven't got the ball pinched between you can still go like that or you can still let it slide I, I know but the ball can go anywhere and you can speed bump it do you know yeah, what I mean yeah. the ball's more free moving than the arrow knocked on the string yeah. but everything else is very good the way he says it and it's a uh, uh, a good thing that he likened it to whenever he was saying about shooting and he's talking about the panic of shooting um, yeah. the recoil can give you ta t uh, target panic f f and it's the anticipation of the recoil. explosion going off inside the gun the gun gives you the recoil uh, because you're tense you're waiting for it whereas a slingshot and a bow the recoil's going into you Aye. so you're the recoil you are the recoil because you're actually part yeah. of the shot yeah yeah so people can flinch mm. and that's the the biggest thing you see is boys flinching is that way that, that's why they miss do you remember that remember i remember we were chatting earlier and i had that real bad how i got that flinch i don't know i don't know how it got i do know how it got in there it was using really really like going from heavy to really like bands like we touched on i think in the last the last episode yeah. But you'd use the heavy bands for and I went down the to guts what? of a decade, like like I went down to green point five or something ridiculous. Point four eight or point something. Point four eight, right? Jesus, uh, I was like, hella mad. What, like, what way was it going? It was going. You were speed. Boom. You were speed bump. Most people speed bump off their finger up like that. And you <laughs> were speed bumping down like that <laughs> off your thumb. <laughs> I don't know. I, sure, I couldn't shit for months. But what I couldn't get over it because I was thinking about it. Yeah. I was anticipating it every time. The more I thought about not doing it, yeah. the more I done it. What you need to do is what your man said last night when I was, or even said last night, the podcast a year old, but I listened to it last night. Is whenever he made a good shot, the shot was perfect, and all the rest, where he was out hunting, he shot an elk, made the perfect shot, and he was like, "How did I do that?" He didn't blueprint it in his mind. Yes, you know. Yeah, and that's a lot of guys do that with, with slingshots. And I remember whenever I get really into the competition side of shooting slingshots, and it, although we, we talk about competitions a lot, it's like into everything. It's like into practicing your catch box. It's like into hunting. You have to create that blueprint. Mm. You can't just go, oh, that was right, what I done, I'll do it again. You have to say, how, how did I do that? What was the difference between my shot cycle on them five shots that were perfect and what changed from my shot cycle the next five shots that yeah. I missed yeah. what, diagnose the problem yeah. if you can diagnose the problem then you can go and rectify it then you can put that into your shot cycle and go yeah. right and another thing that he said which is very very good which just sort of dawned on me last night and I've, I've, I've been doing this right up until now till I watched that last night and he's like he was talking about that uh 60 shots at 20 yards. I has cub. Aye, shooting a penny, mm. the size of a penny, whatever size in America. That's the 12, that's the, that's the 12 in, the, in the target face. And his, his son hit a penny 60 times in a row at 20 yards and he done it twice in a row, or three times in a row maybe, his first person in history to do it. And he was talking about people when they're getting there and you're like, you're getting up to 30. Yeah. You know, you're on 30, you've had it 30 times. Mm. And then you're on your, or 40 times or whatever, 59 times, or whatever, right? And then the next time you go, right, I'm really going to hit it this time. Or, you know, yeah, you know, I really have to hit it this time. Or the pressure's building and building yeah. and building. Yeah. And then all of a sudden Too you fun. subconsciously change yeah. what you're doing because you really want to hit it now. Aye. Why, why not do the same Even thing though, you've done 30 times? You know what I mean? Yeah. And I'm, I've been guilty of that, yeah, you know. I, I've, I've been guilty of that right up until now. Like, right. even if I'm out on the catch box, if I'm out in the catch box yesterday, hmm. I can, w w within five or six rounds, I can do 10 in a row on my wee spinner. Yep. But then see the psychological thing, and once I get past 10, yep. then I slow it down. I'm like, right, I'm really going to hit this now. Right. I'm going to get 20. Why right, we'll change it? Like and I, why are you changing it? All right. But it's that psychological thing. It's like, uh, remember the last podcast we done, the guy asked the question of why am I missing? Aye. It's because you're doing something, either, either it was fatigue or it could be what we're talking about here. It's, right, 
I'll do something different here. I've had it 20 times, so I'm making sure I had it this time. Yeah. Do something completely yeah. different. Yeah. And that's when you go, where did I miss that? And it's just a battle with the sight. The, the it's hard, man. It's hard. See, see drilling in a shot cycle. And the, I'm trying to drill one at the moment. And it, it, the, the, they're all about, they're all about uh, your subconscious mind doesn't like the surprise jolt of the recoil of the bow, or in this case, the slingshot. Yeah. So, so as soon as you're about to let go, you're already <sighs> trying to compensate yeah, 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 for yeah, it. Yeah, 100%. It's that, remember I had that wiggle? Aye. Boom. Like this. It's that getting ready for that release. Like, it's like shitting a rifle when you're going, that's what bang's, that's bang's going to go, that's bang's going to yeah. go, that's, and you jerk the trigger. Yeah. Or you, you're building anticipation into you, like, that Whereas, time we were out lumping rabbits, that's what I done whenever I get the scope up and I missed the rabbit. Obviously, uh, it wasn't even that far away. Yeah. And I, I had night vision and all on it. Uh, and I just like got up to it and I was like, hey, uh, like that. And the shot it. went over it. Because if, if it goes that, I can't it left, I can't it right. Or yeah. maybe the thing wasn't like. I was standing while <laughs> ski with too on uh, the shooting sticks. Yeah. But Ben Barker, God love him, I don't think he'd mind me saying this, but in Italy, he was saying to me, like, he was going up and he was making mistakes and doing things that he knew was wrong, that he couldn't stop doing, Aye. that he hadn't done in three years, five years, something That's like that. That's just anticipation. It was nerves. just the anxiety of the whole thing. And it's all well and good saying, oh, just calm down. How do you calm down? I, I, it's like, it's, I liken it to, say, a boxer. We'll go with Deontay Wilder well, first, first, first. Deontay? Deontay Wilder, well, right? We'll go with him on his third fight with the Gypsy King, mm. right? He says, I've done stuff different this time. Yeah. I went back and I learned how to box and do oh, all this here, right? It's bad, I, bad I, time to start learning. I knew, I said, is that right? Mm. I, he talked all this nonsense like, oh, I was like, right. see when Big Tyson starts bullying the hell out of you here, mm. you're going to go back to default mm -hmm. because you haven't brought up with it as a cub. No. It's not like Mayweather. Mayweather doesn't know any different. Yeah. That is his default. Yeah. So Wilder didn't know what to do on the back foot. Maybe no. in sparring, nobody's put him on the back foot. Aye. So he went back the default because he was under pressure. Yeah. And it showed in that fight, he didn't, oh, know, yeah. what, didn't, know, what he, didn't know what he was doing. He got barred. He got barred, Aye. right? But what the, the, the thing I'm pointing making is, when you're under pressure, you go back the default. Yeah. You know what I mean? Where's if you've you? never been in that situation before, you'll go back, like your guy says, I just kept going back and I, stuff I wasn't doing. Aye. It's because he maybe wasn't ever under that pressure before and you go back into, yeah. oh aye, that's right. Yeah. I remember a time when I was shooting good, but you don't actually consciously think on it that way. No. You just go, right, you go back to what you, mm. you know. Maybe it wasn't drilled enough. But that's, maybe it wasn't. I, 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 I really enjoyed the podcast because I, although the way he, the way that they discuss the release in archery, I don't think you, it's transferable because... It was the only thing that's not transferable. The rest everything of it, else is. Everything else is. Like. But it's like, you have to make decisions. Yes. You can't just let it happen and expect everything to go well. It's like saying... Oh, even though that may work yeah. a, a large proportion of the time, yes. but in them high anxiety moments, yes. like a competition or like hunting, yep. When you need to make the shot and you're under pressure, you're, you're, going, like dog, you're going to revert back because your subconscious mind is yes. fighting against what yeah. you're trying to do. Yeah. And you have to fight that. So that's why I was always, and I, I liked whenever I watched it and I was like, you had recommended it to me and I was worried when I was going to watch it, like, is this going to preach something different to me? And then... Get if, in your head. If it, if it got in my head that there's a superior way to do it than what I'm doing, it, it could mess me up for months but trying it, to learn that. It affirmed what you're already doing. Aye, because it's and all. Let me give about, you a wee bit more. It well, definitely did. Because see that, what he's talking about, whenever you're trying to make 60 in a row and yeah. you get to 59 and you're like, right, I'm really going to make this. And, yeah. and you do, you hold a wee bit longer or Aye. you aim a little bit longer. Funny, small things. But it's different. Yeah, it's different. But that that whole short cycle that I that I preach about uh, controlled movement, all the rest. That's you making decisions. Yeah. That's you taking control. Yes. You're not waiting. You're not punching for, it. You're not punching it. Mm -hmm. You're not plucking it. You're not plucking it. Yeah. Would be applicable to catapults. Yeah. So you're not punching it. Yeah. Plucking it. Like, well, that's <coughs> what they talk about in traditional archery. Yeah. That's where it. I got the term from. Plucking it. 
pluck the string Aye. with excitement. Yeah. Now you can pull back and pull away like that. Yes. And you're not plucking it. I have back tension. But yeah. you can pluck the ball as well. Aye. I see boys all the time. Sorry. The, the difference between uh, I suppose the difference between archery and the thing is you, you can't you can't use back tension. You can't go like this here. Do you know what I mean? No. You're, you, it has to stay there. Like, Aye. So it has to stay there. And you, you that needs to be welded right there, wherever your anchor is, be it here, wherever it is, it doesn't matter. That's why I talk about the two stage anchor. Boom. It has to not move. Right. All it is, is that. Yeah. That's it. That's your, that's your surprise release is uh, uh, you, pressure. Well, the only tension you want on your muscles is what is required. Yeah. You don't Same. need to have, what you'll see is a whole load of boys, this arm here. Bent. This arm here will be loaded with tension. Yeah. Your draw arm will be loaded with anxiety, tension. Yeah. That's cocked, ready to flinch. Yes. You see it all the time. Mm -hmm. All the time. It takes a bit of discipline. It takes discipline to keep that welded. A good, a good way to do it is blank beyond. Blank beyond. Obviously, shooting at their target when no shooting at their catch spots when no not. So you're not actually thinking about hitting anything. You're thinking about Everything. this. You're thinking about, right. you're consciously thinking. You don't hit, because see when you have a target in a catch box and you're not practicing to hit the target, you will want to hit the target. Right. It's as simple as that. It's like if I'm shooting under my, if I'm blank bailing under my target with, with my bow, I take the sight off. Mm. I just take the sight off. Yeah. I close my eyes, I'll draw back, close my eyes. I just feel the shot. Another good thing in it was this arm. Yeah. The catty arm. Yeah. yeah. You don't need to have your elbow locked out where you're squeezing your tricep. No. You don't need it bent into here. No, it's just straight. It's straight, but it's not relaxed. Hyper, it's not straight. Aye, it's not hyper extended. No, you're not squeezing your tricep out. Also your shoulder as well. Aye. You know, keep your shoulder low. Boom. Whenever I was training for the competition in Italy, what I was focused on was I, ha I was trying to have my forearm relaxed, so it wasn't you know it wasn't squeezing onto the ball. Yeah, but just enough. Just enough. I hadn't this tricep squeezed. Yeah. I was drawing back, and I was putting the tension of the draw into my upper trap and my rear delt. Yeah, and that's all. And see, whenever you, whenever you're doing that, and you're focusing on the muscles that are performing the task, yes. and trying to have everything else relaxed, yep. that that's really, really good for being more relaxed when you're shooting. Now, it's very easy to revert back to whenever you start doing that, and if you haven't thought about that before, and you go out and you start training and practicing. It's hard to think about that yes. and also perform the shot, mm -hmm. but it gets easier. But that's what I'm saying, but just go out and don't put a target in the catch box. Aye. It lets you concentrate on this part instead of that part. Yeah. You know, and like I ain't training a shot cycle at the minute, like I said, but if I miss a bit of that shot cycle, right? So I'm drawing up, I'm <coughs> exhaling, mm -hmm. put the bead on. I'm taking another breath, mm -hmm. taking the safety off the back tension and lining my pin up. See on the exhale. That shot, I know that shot's going off in that exhale somewhere. Yeah. It might be the, it, do you know what I mean? Yeah. It's a surprise, like I'm manipulating it because I'm using back tension. Yeah. But that shot's going off somewhere in that fucking thing and I don't know when it is. Yeah. But it works. Yeah. You know what I mean? But uh, I think, like, a shot, like if I miss a part of my shot cycle, that's what I was talking about. If I miss a part of my shot cycle, I'll draw down. Yeah, and go through it again. Ah, I say, yeah. right, I missed a breath there. Yeah, right, scrap that. Yeah, go through it again. Yeah, I missed another breath here, or I missed a uh, set my shoulder in here or something, or you know that type of way. Yeah, so I'll draw down and I'll go back and go back and do it again. Yeah, if you're at full draw and it doesn't feel right, so start again. Start again, like take it down and don't let the shot go for yeah. the sake of letting it go. Because yes, because what, that what is it to say form. if if you. One rep with bad form 
takes 10 reps to get out to get to get out of it yeah so if you go to the catch box just say oh, fuck it just uh, let it go if no, you go to the catch that. box and you do 100 shots with bad form and you know fine well you're doing bad form Aye, you let you it do go that. anyway you know it's going to take a thousand reps to get it out to get it out Aye. and you've went through that the hard way yes. i've went through that the hard way yeah. but i can remember at the start of it must have been 2017 or maybe before it whenever the first online live videos were sort of coming into fashion it was the first one was uh, on twitter i think it was periscope yes that's right you were involved in I that involved too in weren't periscope, you yep. and we had uh, you're not on facebook anymore you came off it a long time ago pre-covid but the periscope was the start of the live shooting league and everybody was into it at yeah. that time shooting cans and targets and that's when 10 times in a row or something that's or whenever like international shooting competitions first kind of happened because mm. we were shooting against americans and yeah. we were shooting against gasper yeah. was into it, the yeah. spaniards yeah. and it was really up there shooters that had never competed before together mm. uh, you know and it brought everybody together. And at that time, I remember I was practicing a lot. Mm. I had just, Asa had just sponsored me, Romany Custom Catapults. Yeah. And he had made me the Pegasus frame. You can see it in all my old videos, the TTF. And I can remember practicing for a competition that was coming up at one of the rounds, mm. a shoot off. And the way we used Periscope to do it. Periscope shoot off. Periscope. Ah. And it, the way we'd done it was in pairs. So it was like, I was against you, um, Dan Ambrosius was against Keith Dighton, mm. uh, Asa was against Gasper, yeah. and then them three winners all went on. And the next yeah, and I can remember like, uh, you know, I had one coming up and I'm practicing and I'm practicing, and I was like, right, I remember I was, sh I was shooting really well. And I was thinking to myself, how can I remember how to do this exactly what I'm doing now? Yeah. I can remember thinking that and being like, why can't I just remember and do exactly what I'm doing now yeah. on Thursday or whatever it was? And I was like, maybe it's the pressure, That's maybe the it's pressure. the pressure. That's 100%. So what I done was, I went live on Periscope and at that time, because the, the grip was, the slingshot grips was quite big, it was over three or four grips. Mm. And I had like 400 odd followers on Periscope on this account that I had just opened. But because it was because people were watching the shooting online shooting leagues as well. And I was like, I'll go live anyway. And I'll, I'll practice in live. front of these and it's yeah, yeah, live yeah. and yeah. that'll train me. And, and it did and it worked. And I remember shooting and I actually done like 12 in a row or something that amazing for me at that time and people were like oh he's brilliant he's going to win that no which didn't help me because then you think am i brilliant you know yeah. well i won this mm. and i didn't but um that was me whenever i first started that was before i had thought about short cycles that mm. was before i had thought you were about short cycle but you didn't know what you was. didn't know what you were doing ah. and then you were going out and you were doing little small changes mm. and you know whenever you're trying to hit something you're aiming at something the size of that lanyard hole. Mm. With something the size of that lanyard hole? From 10 metres. <laughs> no, it's not the easy. The like. tiniest little minuscule difference. Yep. We'll put it off. Right? We'll put it off. Um, it's like you're talking about competition. I had a competition the other week, uh -huh. as you know. And uh, I shot out of 300. I got a round of 275 and a round of 276, which was all right. But I used that, which closed an open lip shooting. But I think you were saying there about competition. I, I remember standing there and there was a girl shooting recurve and she, we'd all shot and she was the last one shooting. And everybody's, you know, everybody's, no matter if Marlon won or whatever, everybody, you know everybody's looking at you. Uh -huh. Going, hey, hurry the hell up or whatever it is or, you know. And I said to myself, I want to be up there. I want to do that mm -hmm. because I want to feel what it's like. Mm -hmm. What's the pressure like? Mm -hmm to shoot into that when everybody's watching me. So the next round then, I slow the way down. I says, I'm going to make sure I'm last here because I yeah. want to feel. Yeah. I want to experience that pressure. You want the practice. I want the practice of, of being, the Of the anxiety. Of the anxiety. I yeah. says, I want the practice. I, and I think I had, out of five hours, I had three fives and two fours. Mm -hmm. So with that, I just, I just sack it all. It's, and it's transferable to any competition like catapult. Mm -hmm. Just go up there and just go through your shot cycle and nobody else is, nobody's there. No. Just put them away and concentrate on what you're doing, be it a carry, a bow or whatever. And I like that. That was a good experience to yeah. get. 
I purposely done it. Yeah. That's why I went live that time. Ah, it's the same thing. See, it's whenever I was practicing for Italy and I was shooting really well, for it, before Italy I had a wee mind fuck up short wobble. Because it was like, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to shoot TTF. I what is that? Is that a deer or something? That was some ran by us there. There's something up in them trees. It was a pheasant or something. Right, so I was like, I'm going to shoot TTF because yeah. it's 10 metres and I'm really good flat trajectory TTF and I made up three of these catapults identical to shoot TTF. That's right. And I practised TTF for a week and a half and this was like three weeks out mm. before it and uh, I wasn't happy. I was like, this isn't... I may not. And then I was like, what am I doing? And then I remember I went in and I picked up the S90 and like I had made that S90. That was one of the first S90s ever made. Mm. And I picked that back up again and I went out with that and it was just magic. Aye. It was like I missed it. And it just everything fell into place again. And you used that? I used it then, I And then I remember practicing with it and it was shooting unbelievable. And I was like, this is great, but I need more pressure. And I didn't want to go live. Because if I had been shooting well going live, then everybody in the comments would have been like, oh, he's on it and blah, blah, blah. And yeah, then yeah, it gets yeah, into yeah. your head and yeah. they go and all this. So you, what I do is I go and get the wife out. And I'm like, watch me here. Because something about her watching me puts wild pressure on me. I even, don't when know. I, even when I'm doing the housework, I hate <laughs> I'm like, I might hope I'm doing this right. <laughs> <laughs> or watching the dishes. But I, 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 I bring there. her out to watch me to put pressure on me. Oh. And uh, that worked, but it's I uh, you're chasing the chasing the pressure. Yeah, you, uh, you need the wee bit of need practice it, like, with the anxiety. You need it, like yeah, hundred percent. You Whether you're hunting or competition, and if you can get, if you can manipulate a situation to get anxiety, it's like anxiety training. Aye, you know what I mean. It's, you need the, you need it, like. And then the, the like the biggest thing I took away from that shot IQ is if it's right, don't change it. So if you if, if you're trying to hit. 10 in a row and you've hit 9 don't shoot the 10th one different ah. don't take an extra minute an extra yeah. half second to aim yeah. you've you can even you can even go as far as count your or some boys go their way some boys will some boys will take uh, 5 seconds per shot from they load the pouch to they yeah. release yeah. right and then they go to a competition or they go hunting and they take 7 seconds ah. or they take 3 because they want to get over and done with. Some yeah. boys, you know, I I seen a lot of that in Italy. Boys raced to get their five shots out of the way. Aye. Why, is the point like, why are you getting them out of the way? They, that's what you come for. That's what you come here for. It's like, you know... You need to decide yeah. every single aspect of that shot cycle. Mm -hmm. You can't let that happen. Just organically. They need to be... A it's, series, a conscious, it's a conscious a process. Series, yeah, because your subconscious takes over... You can't trust your subconscious. No, no. It does what it wants. It does what it wants. Yeah. And like, a, a, again, a lot of times, not a lot of times, maybe four or five times, I was at full draw, and you can feel your subconscious taking over. You're about to let go. You know it's not right, so you stop. You yeah. catch yourself on. You yeah. take it down. You go right. I'm going to do this right. I'm going to perform this shot right. Yeah. And if you, if you practice, if you practice doing that, and you're not in competition. So like I was saying, if you if there's a part of your shot cycle that you skipped or you caught a corner and you do it in practice, you say, right, draw down again, start again. You'll do it when you're in a competition because it's a natural thing and your body knows and your mind knows, all right, that's, there's something not right here. Yeah. Right, stop what you're doing. Yeah. Do it again. Yeah. Go over it again and take the shot. Because yeah. you've loads of time, like, it's only five shots. Yeah. There's a three, three minutes. There's a three minute, and the, the Spaniards, t the Spaniards, they run it down to the wire. Like, yeah, I don't know how they do it, but I, like I seen a, I see one of the Czech men actually is slow as well, but I seen one of them starting to draw his slingshot like that, and he had only ten seconds left. Some of them boys are aiming for twenty seconds, but I don't. That's another thing, that's another thing as well. Aiming for 20 seconds, right? You are not going to hold that pin on that target. Like, that's not going to happen. Yeah. Either you do what you do, which is a controlled movement, be it up or down, left to right, right to left, the figure of eight, whatever it is, right? 
you think about, like we chatted about this, your fart tip is only moving mil. Yeah. And the target you're trying to hit is 40 mil. Uh -huh. So, but your, your, mil your, depth of per, your, your perception thinks it's moving around the 40 mil target like this, when in reality it's not. So if you're in the ballpark, right? If you're in the ballpark and you have this dialed in, you're going to hit that target like because if you point to something, mm -hmm. you're not pointing above it. No, you're pointing directly at it. Mm -hmm. If you were to walk up to that, your finger would touch it, mm -hmm. and it's the same with your eye and whatever you're trying to hit. It mm -hmm. doesn't matter. You're still if you're pointing a, a catty tip or looking through a pen, whatever it is, you're still pointing at it. Yeah. What run behind us there? I don't know. I think there's a pheasant up in that tree. It sounded too heavy to be a pheasant. No, you know but up, there was something up in the trees here. Yeah. Pheasant wouldn't be roosting at this time. No. It could have been a pine martin. Pine martins spend a lot of time in the ground. Here, the thermal's a good job, isn't it? Aye. It's cheating, but. What do you mean it's cheating? You're cheating. I'm not cheating. I can see your camera there from here. What's that over there? I can see it from here as well. <laughs> <laughs> It's a great job that sort of I can see a camera head up. Mm -hmm. oh. Is there heat off it? A camera, it's quite hot. But yeah, uh, oh, we're I smoking just, me I out just here. smoked you out. But I have been shooting my uh, I've been shooting my pro shot Titan a lot as well. I I've been come back here like a smoke kipper. Right. Barbecued, grafting barbecued me here. I'm going for Cold smoke. Today. Go for dinner today. I'm gonna to get a Thai curry or something. Is that us? No. I've been I love shooting that. this a lot. I love that. Like the way the lanyard hole is. Pro shot Titan. Yeah. That hole's lovely. I've got one of them for a giveaway. Have you? Aye. <gasps> Purple one. I might give away that orange one. Like holding. I think holding butt as well. See another thing with holding. That's if it. you're if you're your back wall, right? See if your back wall's good. Like that hole's lovely, that thing. Yeah. That hole's lovely. Yeah, pheasant there. Aye. Your back wall helps you if you have a stretchy band, mm. right? A real stretchy band. You'll not hold if that's a good like that hole's great there for me. There's pressure there and I can hold that better than something that's a bit more stretchier. Yeah. There's a bit of pressure there. Yeah. Which I think helps you. Helps me anyway, keep I, it more stable. I like to have the rear delt and upper trap squeezed out. Like that. Yeah. So that that can't really go back any further without me. Yes. You know. Ah, you know it doesn't uh, feel right. Well, mate, why did you put all that on there? <laughs> <laughs> Two smoke covers. Try and teach them boys, but you know, it's just like an old disobedient cub there, you know, yeah. listen. Once the heat gets up a bit, there we go. Right, that's, that's it. That's us now. That's, that's us now. Mm -hmm. What about the Devonish? There's a few, uh, I, I don't know what the Devonish, the Devonish, uh, that's some crack, literally. So you, what about the girl? She, she got engaged to the footballer at Christmas. And that, no, was her, it, it, that was her on the it, stage. We'll, we'll fill everybody in, because we'll not know what the Devonish is. Oh, so we've a, we have an international audience here. It's a pleasure, boys. The Devonish is a hotel, bar, club type yep. thing in West Belfast. And the UK Pleasure Boys was there. Now, Magic Mike type job, yeah. only. A bit more X, triple X. Triple X, yep. Magic Mike. And the video circulated social media and it was wild. Boys waves and fiancés and oh, all I, getting involved in all kinds of Oh I shenanigans. Yep. On stage and all. Yep. And by the time they got home, their stuff was in the front doorstep. Oh, because <laughs> <laughs> that them videos went round oh, like wildfire. Alright, it's what's like, up? What's up? Mm -hmm. Unreal. Yeah. See if it was your wife or your fiance or your girlfriend, it'd be here. There's the, there's the bag, so you see you later. I think the blue pipe would be out. The blue pipe, the Alcathian would be out. Like, no, it also be out. <laughs> the village parang would be out. That'd be out. 100%. Aye. Well, uh, aye, some crack, or some some brilliant memes. Hey, we had a boy, we had a boy, he went into our work on the Monday after it, right? <laughs> and he had a black eye. Right. 
I think she's Tommy Eagles. Uh, tell me, I say, you weren't the devil, is it? And he says, I goes, what are you doing? Uh, I told him. Did you ever and see? And then he goes to him, I says, you know, they're playing in Dundalk. <laughs> That's Saturday night, you could go and get a match in one. <laughs> <laughs> Did you ever see? You just go, what went they get there? Huh? Did you ever see, there's, some, is it, there's something about Mary with Cameron Diaz? Aye. Uh, and your man Ben Stiller. Uh-huh. Did you ever see whenever your man says, don't be going out with a loaded gun? Aye. Uh, and he sorts himself out in the bathroom. <laughs> and then and then she comes to the door and she goes, oh, hair gel. And it's all stuck in here <laughs> and she <laughs> takes it off. There's girls come home like that. I oh. she put it in the hair, right? <laughs> oh. oh, it was in their hair? Aye. Oh, I've seen that. There's girls come home. Oh, real. West Belfast boys. That's women boys. Women with a fed of pet drink on them and strippers yeah. who don't yeah. know how to handle and themselves. And the same pigs. No, not theirs, you know. Different gravy. It's the worst I ever, I was scarred. Scarred? I had to go to confessions. <laughs> after I watched the video. <laughs> well, if I was at confessions, I'd still be there yet. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, you know, you're looking for your morals are in the gutter or something. <laughs> you know. So, are you going to France? When is it? You always it's ask me that. summer or something. Uh, there's a, all the English lads are going. Vive la France. I feel, like, I feel like a bit of a lone wolf going to the shoots. Oh, I, I fit in well with the English lads and you know they're always nice and friendly to me, but I'm still like a bit of a I feel like a bit of an outsider. Aye, but that's sure that's the sigma. That's the sigma in you. Sigma, yeah. But then whenever me and Kieran went that late the last time. I Oh <coughs> Jesus. Alright. Not say any more about you that. You talk about you know they shouldn't have had a bar at the thing. No, 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 forget about it. An Irish man on his own. Fair enough. That's all right. You might be all right. Mate. Put two together. Bad job. Forget about it. Two young fellas as I well. Two young fellas. I yeah. away at a foreign country with a yeah. pile of drink. Yeah. And a lot of nonsense talk. Yeah. You know, you're asking for baller. Like. Yeah. Because we're not responsible enough. No. And they, We uh, see drink and we'll go, do you fancy going for a pint? Yeah, no, But they don't days. even do pints. They do wee glasses of beer about that size. And then because it's warm out there, you're afraid of it getting warm, so you horse it into you. <laughs> <laughs> and then whenever you go up to the bar, you think, oh God, that doesn't last me long enough. I had to get up halfway through a sentence. So instead of buying one, you <laughs> buy you three. Buy three yeah. <laughs> you go, oh, I don't want that third one to go flat, so you fucking lash them three into you I as well. Mean, I mean being in Scotland one time when uh, I was the DJing me and my mate. And this, we were DJing in this hotel, right? Mm. And the boy behind the boy behind the, the barman, he was a young fella. And I asked him for a pint of Guinness. And he poured it, he didn't let it settle or anything like that. There I says, I'm gonna get a few free Guinness out of this here. I says, listen, let that settle. Pour me another one. I was trying to teach you how to do it. Well he just fell it to the top. He fell it to the top, right? I got four pints out of him. <laughs> <laughs> That's not right, that one. Then again, I just drunk. Like, oh, yeah. I got four free pints out of him. Like, at the end of it, he kind of, he says, you're taking a hand out of me here, aren't you? They do, you see in England, they do that as well. They haven't a the clue. No. Well, some of the old, older bars, like ah. you go into the wee, but, um, like some other spoons and all, it's just, <laughs> ah. Ah. Me and Asa, me and Asa one time after, uh, after a shoot in 2017 in Newport, there was four events, I won three of them. And uh, I was all full of beans, you know. And we came back, we didn't stay in Newport, we went back to Solihull, just outside Birmingham. And right beside where Asa lives, there used to be a wee boat club of a thing. Mm. And it was me and Asa and an old man, Asa's mate, I can't mind his name now, but he's deadly crack, you know. Two gypsy boys, like, they're great, great crack, like, and uh, we're having the banter and all the rest, and then there was a wee man that ran the place called Grant. Mm. This was his boat club. And he closed the bar at, like, half twelve, and then he put, put everybody out, but we all sat on, the ace and knew him well. And then next thing, he, oh, he turned all the lights off, except the wee spotlights from above the bar, and next thing he just pulled the ashtrays out, the ashtrays looked like they'd been there since 1986. 
Certainly. Big round things, big Aye, round things. Big round massive thing. ones. You know the ones Aye. used to get the brand of fags on them, yeah, yeah. Benson and Hedges and yeah. all. Great big massive ice. You could take your fag butt on the thing and all. Grant Great. just pulled the ashtrays out like they were sitting there ready to come out. <laughs> Set the ashtrays up in the bar like that. We were all smoking. It was just like stepping back in time. It was Aye. like an old must to smoke around the bar. It was class. Aye. We sat in there at five o'clock, boys. Aye, everybody out. Bar you boys. Aye. Aye. Bar, it was... The barman and the three of us, and he hadn't drank at all. He started drinking us at that time, and we just drank and drank and drank and drank and drank. And my flight was at like seven in the morning, and I was still there at five, five I, throwing pints into me. Aye. And uh, I'll be all right. We'll make it. We'll make it. I'll make it there. On make it there. On. And then your man, yes, his mate, ended up leaving me to the airport in a big flash Mercedes, blitzed, blitzed. Completely, and I was like, and him palmering it too, and I'm starting to sober up, and I'm like, well, not really sober up, but it wasn't as bad as what it was, you know. Aye. The situation nearly sobers you up, oh, and then you're thinking, oh, it's like RAC rally. Aye. Aye. If this boy gets stopped here, we're in baller, like, you know. I had you to make the, well, I had to make the flight, you know what I mean? Mm. Drank all my money, how was I going to get back? <laughs> <laughs> well, burn the boats, uh, <laughs> I would have burned the boats, like, mm. made it all right, I would have been taking a dinghy across the Irish Sea. <laughs> Yeah. Well, that was good today, mate. Enjoyed Aye. that. Aye. So, any questions? Yep. We want more questions like that man that left the question the last time. The more complex the question, the better. Yes. We can go into the, into the balls of it, if you will. Yeah. And, we can, uh, try we and can, answer it. We try can answer. go balls deep in balls all deep. them questions. Like the pleasure boys. <laughs> <laughs> That's us. We can be the county pleasure boys here. Aye. But don't be whipping nothing out, guys. No, no. Right, thanks for watching. <laughs>